recording from and it will be live streamed on Facebook. So again, the meeting will be recorded. If you have any concern uh, of your photo being streamed, please uh, have your uh, cameras up. Okay, let me start the session with a video that will take you to Isfahan, the beautiful Isfahan, and the video that will give you some sense of the city we have from Chicago, Los Angeles, all the cool places around the world. Okay, after this introduction video, and thanks everyone, everyone is joining again. For people who are joining, I put everyone in the mute. If you have any comment, questions, please type in the chat box. If you like, leave a short introduction of yourself in the chat box. Uh, it's great to have you guys here in the session. And if you've been in my lives before or no, we have people from Los Angeles, Berkeley, all amazing places. After this video to give you some sense of beautiful Esfahan, let me introduce myself first. My name is Bahman. I am originally Iranian, but I live in Melbourne, Australia since nine years ago. Since the pandemic has started a uh, uh, couple of years now, I started doing virtual tours of Iran and other parts of the world and these free uh, public live sessions from time to time. Also, we cover other places. Today, I want to take you to one of the main highlight cities of Iran, Isfahan. And one of the highlights of Isfahan, Naqsh Jahan Square, which is, which is a UNESCO heritage and a really amazing place to visit. Uh, Naqsh Jahan Square is kind of showing the top and the peak of the Iranian architecture and the glorious of the glory of the Iranian uh, or Persian Empire. Uh, after this introduction, and thanks everyone, Deborah, Livia, and everyone who introducing themselves, uh, let me take you to the balcony of uh, 
Ali Qapu, one of the beautiful palaces in Isfahan, but the balcony of Ali Qapu is where you can have a really good view of Nakht Jahan Square. And I will explain more about Nakht Jahan Square and what we're going to cover in today's session from the balcony. Uh, let me share my screen again and uh, I will talk more about Nakht Jahan Square. Okay, we are on top of Nakhsa Jahan uh, balcony of uh, Ali Qapu, where we can have a really good view of uh, Nakhsa Jahan Square from the top. Nakhsa Jahan Square used to be the second largest square in the world after Tiananmen in China, and it was the central city of Isfahan of Shah Abbas, the great Iranian king who even nowadays the backbone of the modern Iran is pretty much uh, owes to what he has done in the country. Uh, today I will take you around Nakhchi Jahan Square and we'll talk about this beautiful bazaar. The Lakers, the nigga you broke get your cake up. Your cake up. I like my hoes with no makeup. No makeup I'm chopping as soon as I wake up. This beautiful. Like a yeah. You speak on CP. If you fuck with me, then that's how you feel. I can't wait till I can sit on the mail. Last year I was hungry, I can't get a meal. Hit from the back, I be giving the chills. All my day one niggas, you know I can steal. Down on my dick was in that super shit. Sorry guys, from time to time we had people who might create some noise. Today I will take you to these beautiful mosques, the beautiful palaces and a square to give you a much better sense of this beautiful place. I will also talk about Shah Abbas and what happened in the country during the pretty much 40 years of his reign. That uh, was the time of the development of this square as well, to give you a much better sense of what happened in the country. So this square has been built around 400 years ago. In the time that Persia or Iran were under the rule of Safavid Empire or Safavid dynasty. Safavid Empire is uh, the last empire in the Iranian history that we can call them the true Persian Empire. Uh, and Shah Abbas or Shah Abbas the Great is the strongest king of the dynasty. He had a, like a really uh, interesting life and he had lots of ups and downs and he was a successful king in terms of politics. Uh, to give you a bit, bit of sense, let me share my screen again and show you the map of Iran and his time. So this dark green area, you can say green map, which is the extent of uh, Persian empire, but this dark green area, which is a smaller, was, uh, the part of Persia when uh, Shah Abbas was young and started his reign. So you can Esfahan here in the center, but if you have a look further top, you can see the first, the uh, capital that Shah Abbas started his power, Qazvin. It is right under Kismin Sea in the north, where my pointer is. Shah Abbas was the, become the king in the eight, age of 18 years old. Before that time, he used to be to live in Herat, the city in modern Afghanistan. Here in the east, you can see that in the right hand side of the screen. Uh, Shah Abbas had a really hard life as a child. When he was 18 years old, he has been split from his mother and father because of the politics. But he has put as the governor of Herat in that age. And because he was very young, he has said to have a guardian. Shah Abbas were lucky to have his uh, really good guardians that uh, raised him as uh, learning a whole lot about the war, about the politics, and learning about art and different uh, types of knowledge that used to exist on that time. But from the other time in his childhood was full of the other things that had happened. His separation from his mother, and the guardians who were getting killed every now and then. And that makes Shah Abbas to learn about the reality of the politics, which is lots of games and it is very cruel. 
Shah Abbas uh, was the fifth king of Safavid dynasty. And uh, his dad, Muhammad Khodabande, was a very weak person in terms of personality. And that was another thing that uh, created the traumas of Shah Abbas in his life because his dad couldn't manage the country well. So after talking about Shah Abbas, uh, I will show much more of the beautiful uh, Nahr Jahan Square soon in the tour, but I need to make this uh, background for you to understand uh, the time of Shah Abbas better. I want to take you to 100 years earlier than Shah Abbas around the 860 AC. This guy that you can see in the slide is Shah Ismail or Shmal, who was the first person who created Safavid dynasty. Shmal or Ismail uh, was the person who can united Iran after 800 years of invasion of Arabs and Muslims. Persia used to be a big empire and 1400 years ago, uh, as a result of the Arab invasion, uh, the country accepted Islam, but also it never had a unified empire until Ismail has done that. So the yellow area is the place that uh, Ismail could have taken over qu really quickly to create the backbone of the country. But it was the time that Ismail gets his biggest challenge that became the biggest challenge of Safavid after him as well. And that one was the Ottoman Empire at the peak of its power. What that made the situation even worse, uh, apart from that Ottoman army were always bigger than Safavid, was that Ottomans used to have gunpowder and Safavid didn't. So Shah Ismail was a successful king until he get to fight with Ottomans and he lost the fight. Uh, you can see a green area, the yellow area that has some violet color in that. This is the area that Shah Ismail lost as a result of war with Safavid, with uh, Ottomans. From that time, the history of uh, Safavid became the uh, story of the hard resistance against the pressure of uh, Ottoman army in the time that Safavid didn't have uh, gunpowder. And Shah Abbas was the fifth king of this dynasty of, uh, after Shah Ismail. When he was young, uh, Ottomans could have uh, split a much bigger part of Iran because his dad was weak and weren't able really to organize the war. And that was the reason why the allies of Safavid, you can see in the right hand side, a figure of a Pezel Bosch, who were the Shiites warriors loyal to uh, Safavid, uh, decided to support Shah Abbas to become the king of the country. So in the age of 18, Shah Abbas with the army of uh, Qizil Bash moved from Harat to Ghazvin, the capital back those days, to get the power as a king. Uh, Shah Abbas started his uh, rule with a clear vision to make Persia a great place again. But he had lots of challenges. Uh, Ottomans were pressuring too much and Uzbeks from Central Asia, we can see the area that Uzbeks were in the green, were uh, uh, attacking to the country. So soon after Shah Ismail became the king, Uzbeks took over a big part of Eastern Iran, including the city that he grew up, Herat and Ottomans were preparing to make another attack. Imagine that you are an 18 years old king, and as soon as you get the king, you have all those conflicts. Also, Qizil Bash, the, the warrior nomads, uh, started to ask lots of benefits from him, and they had lots of conflicts within each other, like the Qizil Bash groups. That made the situation even worse for him. Shah Abbas started his reign uh, making a treaty with Ottomans and give out a big part of Iran. Here in the map, uh, you can see the photos of Shah Abbas, but also you can see a dark yellow and a lighter yellow. This yellow parts are the uh, areas that Shah Abbas gave away to Ottomans in the sake of peace, so he can go and fight with Uzbeks. Uh, 
when he decided to fight with Uzbeks, Shah Abbas made another big decision, and that was moving the capital to Isfahan. As Isfahan was much more, much more in the center, and back those days, southern Iran were uh, under attack of Portuguese as well. So Iran from all sides were under the attack of different powers. From Isfahan, he had could have closer to all different parts, but uh, it was a big danger that Shah Abbas were, became far from Ghazalbash, who were the traditional uh, supporters of Safavid. Shah Abbas uh, sent an army to march in Isfahan, and he traveled to Isfahan to uh, show the people of Isfahan that he is a nice king. And that was the start of Nafta Jahan Square. The area that we have Nafta Jahan Square these days uh, used to be the center of the uh, kingdom of Isfahan, the local kings. Not a big area like that. Shah Abbas ordered to uh, flat a big part of that area, and he did some marching with his army to show to the people that he is a strong king. After this act to Isfahan, Shah Abbas got back to Ghazvin and prepared to fight with Uzbeks in the eastern side of the country. Uh, that fight was a successful fight, and uh, it was the time that Shah Abbas started to create a much more organized army, and uh, also opening up the army to other people, to the Persians, to the Armenians, to Georgians, to whoever who, whoever who were happy to fight with him. His army were become really well trained in the fight with Uzbeks, and they, he could have took back all the areas that Uzbeks were invaded and conquered. After that victory, people of Iran started believing in Shah Abbas as a strong king. Shah Abbas got back to Ghazvin, his capital, and it was the time that he formally moved to Isfahan. And it was the year of 999 uh, lunar year after the, uh, in the most Islamic calendar. So Shah Abbas put that uh, date as the date of having a new capital in the new millennia of Islamic calendar. And that was the start of the glory of Isfahan. When Shah Abbas uh, went to Isfahan, he had other challenges. The locals in Isfahan weren't really a fan of him. Isfahan was a big city and it was lots of business people who were living in that city for a long time. And guess what? When a new king comes, he wanted the lands and he wanted the control over the city and the city elites didn't like it. So they started doing lots of sabotage and all different sorts of stuff to Shah Abbas to show that this is our city. It is not your capital. Get back to Ghazmi, to the place that you belong. Shah Abbas is still young, but very visionary, not afraid of these moves. Uh, Naqsha Jahan Square was outside the city of Isfahan. And Shah Abbas started developing his square to make it the center of the empire and the center of the trade and economy. This is the time that he was organizing to fight back with Ottomans in the same time. And he has started having lots of negotiations with European countries, including British. He wanted to get gunpowder from British. And in the same time, he has started um, uh, migrating to Armenians and Georgian to inside the country, especially to Isfahan. One of the reasons where Armenians uh, were really good merchants and he wanted to use their brain in the trade, but also another reason was uh, Shah Abbas was, uh, wanted to uh, get the help to make much better connection with British. Uh, he started setting up his palace, uh, Ali Bapu, that we have started, but he also started making uh, lots of artisan shops and uh, bazaar centers around Nafti Jahan Square uh, to make uh, his uh, square the center of the trade in Isfahan. Uh, before I talk more, I want to take you around Nafti Jahan Square to the bazaars and shops around the square where you can still see the handicrafts and the people who work in, uh, in this square. And it was the same back those days. People were making lots of things and we were selling them to Europe. And after that, we will get back to Nafta Jahan Square and we'll show you more. 
I should say Naqsh Jahan Square is a place that you need more than a day to visit all of them. Let me take you to some of the areas around Naqsh Jahan Square to give you some sense of the bazaars during Shah Abbas time, also nowadays. Here, the place that people do handicrafts on copper is not the only place. Uh, Isfahan Bazaar is a very attractive place for all the tourists. So it's not only this part. Let me take you to another section where you can see more of this beautiful market and the artists who are working in that. I get a question, who built this square what? I think I explained. Again, Shah Abbas the Great, who I will share his story on this tour as well. And he was building this square between 400 years ago and 360 years ago. So he has started building the square by building his palace, Ali Rapu, that I will show you shortly, and the markets around. Uh, that was the stage of the square on, the, on those days. Uh, let me show you uh, Ali Bapu, taking you to the top of Ali Bapu, uh, one of the old palaces of Shah Abbas. And after that, I will show more of uh, Isfahan. So Shah Abbas built a few different uh, palaces in Isfahan. And Ali Baku was the palace who were facing Naqsh Jahan Square. It was the center of his rule and the place that the army were coming to see him, also local people. We are on top of the balcony of Ali Baku, similar view to what the video that I showed it to you. And Ali Baku has six floors uh, as a palace. It's got really beautiful painting and decoration in that. You can see the balcony. Shah Abbas loved to sit here to watch horse polo. That was one of the main reasons people were coming here and uh, also to people to come and talk to him. Uh, behind this palace, it used to be the governance part of uh, Safavi where uh, people were ruling the country from here. You can see the stairways of uh, Ali Bapu at the back of the palace. And uh, here you can see the main hall of Ali Bapu. Let's have a look at this beautiful decoration and plaster work and painting. 
Also some examples of Persian miniature Isfahan school on the walls. And here you can see one of the other halls. People call this place the music hall. What you can see on the ceilings are very exquisite plaster work. And it is said that this plaster work is designed to create a much better volume and tone for the music who used to be played here. So when musicians were playing in this room, uh, this plaster work were creating a much better tone and volume and the music could have been heard all around uh, the palace. And here you can see the entrance of uh, the palace from the square and also from the back of the palace. 400 years ago, when Shah Abbas was living here, uh, this door wasn't into the city. This door was the entrance to the government part of the uh, Safavid uh, complex. And actually the end of this walkway were ending to another palace, Chehel Sutun. Uh, they were uh, filling the pool uh, by hand. Nowadays, we don't fill the water. Yeah, it was just the, uh, it wasn't any direct connection. They were filled up all manually. Uh, during this time, after, uh, around 980 after uh, Jesus Christ, Shahabas were starting to create a much more organized army. Also, improving the business and economy in Isfahan. Lots of new migrants, lots of them the artisan and scientists and artists and all wise people or uh, tradesmen were moving to Isfahan and Shah Abbas were getting them settled in the new areas of Isfahan, not in old parts who disliked them. So Isfahan has started to grow and the population raised to 500,000 people. In the same time, Shah Abbas could have created some coalition with British and they get the gunpowder of them. And it was the time that he has started attacking to Ottomans again. It's been three wars where Shah Abbas could have taken over all the lost land from Ottomans. It was the time that Shah Abbas become a really strong king and Persia become a really rich empire. And the money out of those uh, economy were making Isfahan more beautiful and more beautiful. In this period, Shah Abbas built the second uh, thing, main things in the square, and that was the uh, Sheikh Lotfullah Mosque. And also he has started developing the market, the new market that he were uh, developing around the square. Uh, let me take you to Sheikh Lotfullah Mosque, which is a really beautiful mosque, and the beauty of the mosque will surprise you. Okay, here was the beautiful uh, Sheikh Lotfullah Mosque or Shah Mosque. In Persian, Shah means king. So Shah Mosque was opposite to the King Palace and King could have go gone there from the walkway under the square. The other things that Shah Abbas built in this area was the 
case study a market and also the intents of case study a market, which is one of the other interesting things in Isfahan. So let me show you case study yet uh, before continuing the tour. Here you can see the entrance to the old base area market. Uh, here is beautiful, for amazing view from the top of the building. And base area means the market of the clothing. Uh, base area market in Shahabas time, what used to be like a fashion center by a modern standard time. It was like a Milan or Paris, where people could have bought lots of exquisite clothing and uh, other things in terms of wearing and garments. Uh, also, this place used to connect uh, Isfahan, uh, uh, Nakhche Jahan Square to the old city of Isfahan. Nowadays, if you get into the market from this side, you can walk around this uh, bazaar and enjoy the beautiful uh, uh, weather, uh, beautiful uh, shops and artisan workshops. And I'm telling, to see the whole uh, square, you need more than a day, and you can find countless number of handicrafts here. The weather in the area, the summers are really hot, the winters are a bit cold, the uh, autumn and spring are mild. And if you notice, the markets are covered. And that's because of people who could have easily walked and uh, shop in the market. You can see all the markets are covered. And the covered market goes all around the square, also goes from the other way towards the old part of the city. Back those days in the times that Safavid won Ottomans, still Portuguese were in the south. But this side of the square wasn't in the way that you see nowadays. It was the time that Safavid became very strong and Shahabas started developing the market, making lots of artwork and uh, he has started thinking that the new Esfahan that he built right next to the old Esfahan missed something. And that one is a big, beautiful mosque to become the center of the city. And Esfahan has an old Friday mosque. Back those days, that was the center of the city. And that mosque is really, really pretty. So Shahabas uh, made his thoughts, where is the best place to build uh, his mosque. And he picked the area in the southern part of the market, the only empty part of the market. The square, one side was his palace, one side was Shah Mosque, the other side was the entrance of the market. So he picked the opposite side to build his uh, masterwork, uh, Imam Mosque. It took 20 years to complete Imam Mosque. And the result was a real masterpiece. I wanna take you to Imam Mosque now and show a little bit of Imam Mosque to you. But I should say Imam Mosque is the most uh, beautiful uh, mosque of the country and one of the most beautiful mosques in the Islamic world. Uh, it ran a little, Isfahan is very dry. It's got a beautiful river. Yeah, it took 20 years to build Imam Mosque. Let me take you to inside Imam Mosque. Safavid is the peak of attention to details and sophistication in the architecture. And you can see that. Also Herat, the city that Shahabas grew up, uh, back those days used to be the center of art. So Shahabas, since he was like very young, he get that taste in the art and architecture. And he decided to make Isfahan even much nicer than Herat. You can see the beauty of the mosque right here, the entrance of the main mosque, the main hall. The courtyard has some uh, identical buildings on the four corners, which is a pretty main thing in the Iranian architecture. That represents the four elements on the four corners of the wood. And you can see the entrance of the mosque from the back. Let me take you inside the main hall. Here you can see the doom in the main uh, part of the mosque. This mosque is a real masterpiece, but the main, main highlight is the dome. You can see the beautiful hall in the center of the square. And let's get back to the dome. Why this dome is a masterpiece? There are a few different reasons. The first reason 
is the great tall work on that. The second reason is that this doom is a double layer doom. So what you can see inside is different with what you can see outside. And actually there is a walkway between the two layers of the doom that a man can easily walk. Also, uh, uh, this doom has a great acoustics. There is a sounding rock somewhere right on the center of the doom that if you stand and if you clap your hands, you will hear back your clappings seven times. Imagine what would have been happened if you get to sing. Uh, Emma Mosque is a really big place. It's also, it's got a really calming architecture. Uh, it's a really great place to go and sit and enjoy the great vibe and the calming vibe of the mosque. Uh, after taking you around the mosque and showing a little bit of that, it was made by Shah Abbas the Great. And the writings are uh, the essays of Quran, the holy books of Muslim. It's a calligraphy art in the mosque. After taking you in the mosque, I want, and talking about that amazing eco in the square, I want to share another video with you. And I should say in, during this time, Shah Abbas could have pushed back the Portuguese from the Southern part of the country. And he became the beloved king of the people as he got rid of all the enemies of the country. I want to share a beautiful music. And in this uh, video, and in this video, you can see two of the tourists. Maybe you will be the future tourists who might do that. Uh, yes, the bottom is solid uh, marble. Uh, you can see two of the tourists who singing in the main part and getting that echo. Let me share this video with you before continuing the tour. So what you can find, this is the... Welcome to Esma. Thank you. Okay, that was the cute singing under the doom to get that echo. Uh, and it, this time, after completing this mosque, actually Nafsa Jahan Square became complete. Nafsa Jahan means the image of the world. And people used to call Esfahan of uh, Shah Abbas Nesfe Jahan, which means it is the half of the world. And it was because of the glory and the beauty of the city, including to the central square of the city. Uh, Shah Abbas led his empire and his city to become uh, one of the most magnificent uh, cities of the world, as you could have seen. And Iran during his time become really rich and strong. Uh, at this part of the tour, after taking you around Nafsi Jahan Square, I also left the address for my YouTube channel. This is where you can find a recording of this session after the tour. And also I've done a whole lot of other lives and videos about Iran. If you subscribe, you can see those videos as well. It's also a way to support me to continue doing this job. So from the empire as big as this dark uh, green area, Shah Abbas created an empire as big as this. 
and he was probably the only Eastern king who uh, had the fair trade with Europeans during his time. Uh, you can see photos of Shah, the pictures of Shah Abbas. He had his brand uh, mustache that he's famous for, but he can see the two main pictures of him. Shah Abbas in the party and Shah Abbas in the war. He was a very brave king. When he was at war, he was fighting right in front of his army himself. He wasn't a coward. He believes that the soldiers to fight well, they need to follow their king. But in the time of peace, he had a good taste in party. The last uh, picture that you can see is the story of his last victory that happened without the war. So Shah Abbas took some eastern part of his uh, area, which are in the areas of modern Pakistan and Afghanistan, the area of Kandahar from Indian King with negotiation. And uh, here you can see the story of his negotiation with the Indian King. And here in this photo, you can see Nasha Jahan Square in his time. So we didn't have any park or greenery in the center of the square. The square was had sands in between. Then that was to make this place a good place for the army to march and also for the people who play horse polo. Uh, what you can see in Nasha Jahan Square, that park is still in the center, is a recent development. Uh, lots of the international visitors visited Isfahan during Shah Abbas time, and they made some paintings out of that. And also they were comparing Shah Abbas square with lots of the main squares in Paris, in Venice, and in uh, London, as I'm showing you. And they weren't like totally wrong. There are similarities in the way to make a square with all the arches around and palaces and things like that. So you can see uh, like the painting of uh, Shah Abbas, painting of uh, Nasha Jahan Square back in the history by the European visitors around 400 years ago. And also you can compare it with some of the squares like San Marco or other squares in Europe. Like again, another painting from uh, Nasha Jahan Square. Uh, Again, another one from how a square used to be, like the king used to sit here in the balcony and watch people and seeing what's going on. And here you can see the oldest photo of Nasha Jahan Square, for, which is from uh, around 150 years ago. Uh, so after Shah Abbas, Shah Abbas was a very worst in politics, but And yeah, yeah, he became the king at the age of 18 years old by the help of the Pezal Bash, the warriors loyal to the dynasty. Uh, Shah Abbas was a very good king in terms of politics, but he had some bad aspects as well. His traumatic childhood made him to have uh, be a bit paranoid, paranoid, especially towards the, his children, who he, was, who he was afraid paranoid of getting the power from him. So despite being uh, such a wise king, he could have been very cruel as well. One of the things that he has done, he kind of killed all his children and the only one who was left uh, alive, he was blind. Uh, you can see another old photo from uh, Nasha Jahan Square. These uh, columns that you can see are the columns for playing horse polo, they still remain. This photo is from 200 years after Shah Abbas. So he couldn't really create a strong successes. Safavid last 100 years after Shah Abbas, but none of them will become a king like Shah Abbas. And after 100 years, uh, Safavid collapsed. Uh, after lots of ups and downs, Qajar king came to the power and Qajar are the people who set Tehran as the capital. And during this daytime, they truly disliked Isfahan. So Nasha Jahan Square really uh, had hurt during Raja Square and also Isfahan until in the recent century, the Pahlavi's uh, dynasty, they renovate Nasha Jahan Square again. And that's how you can see this beautiful uh, square. Uh, that was what I wanted to share with you. If you had any questions, please start typing in the chat box. I will share another video to take you back to Nasha Jahan Square again. I need to remind you 
if you need to see the whole square, uh, you need to see, you spend more than a day. Yes, Tiffy, he was a great man and he was a madman in the same time. Because of his hard childhood, he became very wise in the politics and he had a really strong will. But in the same time, he was paranoid. Uh, yeah, don't forget that what, all that I showed you, you need to spend more than a day. Also, don't forget to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I left a link for you. And if you have any questions, please type until I share the last video, which will take you back to Nafsa Jahan Square uh, again at the end of the tour. Uh, so now that you know the story of the square, you can uh, see it from another angle.
das Kind ohne zu fragen, ohne gefragt zu werden, ist Muslim. Es ist so. Ja? Das Kind, ja, genau, das Kind, das Kind, das Kind, ja, genau. genau. Und das ist Das ist Kunst. Das ist Kunst. 